It started before the birth of Nelson Pointer. His father, Mr. Pointer, purchased the St. Petersburg's Time in 1912, later accumulating other local papers. Here is an audio clipping of Nelson Pointer telling the association of his family to the newspaper. Because the boom was over, the Times Publishing Company, which had been acquired by my father in 1912, largely at the prodding of my mother who had come to Florida with her father in the 80s. And we had spent winters at New Smyrna. And uh, so this was part of, uh, of a small chain of papers that my father had. The Kokomo Dispatch in Indiana, the Seymour Democrat, the Sullivan paper, the original family paper, Columbus, uh, Indiana, Noblesville, Indiana, later the Hickory Record in North Carolina. Though Mr. Pointer made strong efforts, the small newspaper empire crumbled into a small financially wobbly distress. It was at that struggling moment Nelson Pointer recognized his focal career. wrote his first story for the St. Petersburg Times in 1914. In 1925, he received a BA degree from Indiana University, followed by a master's degree from Yale in 1927. He knew from early age what he wanted to do with his life. Quote, there never was any question what my career would be. Journalism was in my blood from childhood. End quote. Due to the instability of his father, Pointer took on the opportunity to regain such success. The business side of newspapering pretty fast. It was a crash course, literally. And uh, among the uh, assets was the Clearwater Sun. And so I had a crash course in Clearwater, too, because uh, I knew the paper had to be sold. And so I got it in shape, advertised it for sale, found a buyer, and uh, I made $25,000 on that deal. <laughs> it was a great deal of money, and I thought it was quite natural that a Yale graduate uh, who was, uh, well, let's see, I would have been about uh, 25 years old, it would make $25,000 his first year out of college, and uh, thought nothing of it. However, a challenging time was around the corner. The Great Depression caused Pointer to lose all that he had gained since graduation. Debt soon increased, and Mr. Pointer still had tabs open with many scattered creditors. With the declining health of Mr. Pointer, the printer workers formed riots and strikes in rebellion of the financial hardships. Young Pointer felt of true aid and decided to start buying the St. Petersburg Times in efforts to ease the demand of his father's creditors. It wasn't until 1947, Pointer drafted a 500-word statement called Standards of Ownership and was able to regain full control, all for the sake of his own desire to have the best newspaper in the country. He put it upon himself to report on difficult topics, such as racial discrimination, to the dinner table, to seek out the unpopular voice in citizens and present it to the public eye. Pointer initiated the U.S. Information Agency during World War II, and by 1948, he and his wife founded Congressional Quarterly, a legislative news service committed to fulfilling Pointer's philosophy of independent journalism to the newer generations ahead. This was a seed later to plant what is now known today as the Pointer Institute for Media Studies, which resides in St. Petersburg, Florida. In 1953, Pointer became the president of the Times Publishing Company upon his father's death and chairman of the board in 1969, all of which he held until his death. It wasn't until 1958 that Pointer was awarded the Distinguished Alumni Service Award by Indiana University, followed by his first honorary doctorate from Stetson University College of Law in 1962, Florida State University in 1970, Edgar College in 1973, and lastly, 
University of South Florida in 1978. Pointer felt the need to pay St. Petersburg back for all the greatness it offered him. As payment to the city he loved, he campaigned for land expansion for the USF St. Petersburg Campus Library. Nelson Pointer, accompanied by his second wife and other business leaders and students, broke ground with gold paint and shovels. On June 15th of 1978, just a few hours after such celebration, Pointer died from a cerebral hemorrhage. He was damned as a communist, a fool and a meddler, praised as a patriot, a genius and a visionary. Nelson Pointer poured out his passion into independent journalism for the sake of the paper to remain locally owned and safe from the cruel and deceptive capitalistic chains. The St. Petersburg Times newspaper changed its name to the Tampa Bay Times in 2012, 34 years after Pointer's death. The newspaper, as a whole, has won 12 Pulitzer Prizes for outstanding journalism. The Pointer Institute is globally recognized for its exceptional journalistic skills. They attract some of the best reporters, editors, photographers, and specialists across continents. And lastly, as Paul Tash, former editor and chairman of the St. Petersburg Times said, here's to a little guy in a bow tie who came from Indiana. <laughs>